Hello, friends. We are well into summer here in South Carolina, and I don't know about you, but southern hot is a whole lot different than a hot in other areas of our world. It is southern hot right now. But this summer, as we go through our lessons, we are still focusing on faith. And faith is trusting what you can't see because of what you can see. Sometimes we just need to take a minute to stop and look around and see all the things that God is doing for us. See the way that he loves us through our friends, through our family, through nature, through the events we get to take part in, and through the people that we get to know in our lives. We can trust God that he has a plan for us in all that he does. We may not be able to see God with our eyes, but we can see what he does in and around us. We can focus on things that are true about God because of the things that we know about him. And we know that we can trust him no matter what. So as we go into this next lesson, take a minute to do two things for me. Number one, hit like so that we know you're here. And number two, hit share so that your friends can see this message as well. Would you take a moment to open in prayer with me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that you not only gave us the opportunity to walk with you, talk with you, be your friend, be your child, but that you gave us the ability to appreciate all the things that you have done and are doing for us every single day. As Pastor David gets ready to open the Bible and teach us about the altar in Athens, open our ears, our hearts, and our minds so that we can hear what you would have us to hear and we can learn the things that you would have us to learn and so that this week we can take time to tell others about you as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, hey guys, I'm glad to be back with you today. Make sure you like and share. Thanks for Lori giving us a great intro. I wanted to start off today by, by just expressing how appreciative I am of those of you who are communicating with us online. And if you need anything, please let me know. dford at northsidebaptist.org. Going to get started in our lesson. We're in the book of Acts. Now, in your Bible, we're going to go back to the book of Acts. Last week we were in Ephesians, but now we're back in the book of Acts in ver uh, chapter 17. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then Acts, the fifth book of the New Testament. And the New Testament is towards the back of the Bible. And I'm just pretty excited to talk about this lesson because I honestly have been where this lesson is set. You see, about five years ago, I had the opportunity to go with the church and we went to Greece and we did a mission trip to Greece with uh, some missionaries we worked with. It was a great time. Um, we had a lot of fun. And so one of the things that we took a trip in the package was we went to Athens and in Athens, Greece is where the setting is for today's story. Now, you got to understand that in the days uh, that Paul was walking around, he actually went on several of these journeys. He didn't take an airplane. He walked, he uh, rode on an animal, or he took a boat. But by most of the time, what he was doing is he was on foot. And so they would travel through the world on foot, and, and they would go to new places and see new things. It would take them a long time to do it, and they had a lot of time to talk and a lot of time to see each other. And so I want to tell you that the Jews of the time, um, they were the ones that were, we know of as the Israelites. And so the Israelites were, were a group of people that were there in the Middle East, and Paul was part of them. And so he was raised up, and, and he knew God, and he knew about God. He was a very devout, which means he was very, very uh, concerned about his religious standing. So he was very devout. And he was also, he, he was very religious, which means he focused a lot on spiritual things. We found out that he was actually studying the wrong things, but he had a change. And that change was a conversion that took place in his life on the road to Damascus. So I want to jump in to tell you that we're now going to be talking about a group of Greeks. Let me just lay some groundwork. The Greeks ate Greek food. They, they had Greek ideas. They had Greek language. They had Greek thoughts that as they went through their day, the things that they did in their art, in their culture, were very Greek, very different than we know of as, as uh, uh, of what we are today or what the Israelites, the, the Jews of the time were. 
And one of the things to mention, like, when we went over there, they, they ate a lot of lamb, they ate a lot of olives, they ate a lot of olive oil, everything was cooked in olive oil, and, and Greek yogurt, and potatoes are the same, but there's just so many different things. And, and I just want you to know that Paul comes to this town in Athens, he's really not even supposed to be there, the Bible says, and so he shows up in this town of Athens, and we're going to begin to look at this group of people, these Greeks. Now, the Greeks didn't know Jesus. They, they didn't know of Jesus and what he had done. As a matter of fact, the Greeks had this big hill called Mars Hill, and it's actually a, a, a big, huge rock. And you got to climb around to get to it, and you get up. But once you're on the top of that rock, I've been there. You can see so far. On a clear day, I bet you can see 20, 30, 40 miles. I, I don't really know exactly how far you can see, but I've been there. I know what it's like. It's a big, solid rock, kind of like Stone Mountain, Georgia. And so um, Paul is getting there, and, and here's these Greek people. And the Greeks, they didn't know Jesus, so they had like a God for just about everything. They, they had a God for when the sun came up. Um, they had a God for, for the crops that they were doing. Um, if they were getting ready to travel across a body of water in a ship, th they thought that there was a God that protected them as they traveled on the water that was specific to water. And they, and they felt like there was a God to the wind and a God to anything else. And, and so what happens is, is, as this becomes their culture and they get surrounded by that, they begin to build shrines to all of these different gods, literally hundreds of different gods. Now, you and I know that that's not the way it is. We know the God that made the land and the sea, right? So here we're going to do is I'm just going to give you some insight. See, they, they had gods of war. And, and that's, that's something. I, I mean, they, they, they were very, very devout in what they did. They, they had gods of love. And you know, I mean, I guess that, you know, if you don't have Jesus, that's one of the things that, that you could follow as a God of love. And they had gods of knowledge. Check out this. They had a, a gods of knowledge. Got some study to be done. And, and then they had gods of music. Now, I'm not, I'm not the most musically inclined person, but, you know, I, I, would, I would say that that, that was probably some that was big in their culture is, is the art and the music of the day. As a matter of fact, they had here a God, there a God, everywhere a God God. That's basically how they were living. And one of the things that Paul did is he began to travel there. And verse 16 of chapter 17 says this. He says that Paul was waiting for them in Athens and he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols. I, I know that, that one of the things that bothered him was that he saw that these devout religious people were not serving the one true God. And that broke his heart because there was a time in Paul's life when he was a devout religious person. He was not serving the one true God. So I'm going to read for you in verse 17. It says, He reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the God-fearing Greeks. So Paul goes there and he's like sharing with them, Hey, listen, the truth is, is that Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Messiah. And it says that he went on into the marketplace day by day with those who happened to be there. Sort of like when Paul was just going to the market to get food. Paul was going there to, to get fruit whatever it was he was going to buy, he would share the gospel with them based on the fact that they were there in proximity. And so he says he spends a lot of time in the market, but he runs into, in verse 18, a group of Epicurean and Stoic philosophers began to dispute with him. Some asked, what kind of babbler is this to be saying this? Others remarked, he seems to be advocating some other type of foreign God. They said this because Paul was preaching about the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, the real smarty pants group of Greeks basically invite Paul to talk more about this resurrection from the dead that he's doing. But before we get to that, 
I want you to pay attention to this little commercial. Hey guys, I want to tell you about Operation Christmas Child. It's what we do during the month of July that helps get the gospel across the world through Samaritan's Purse. Operation Christmas Child is where you go and you fill a shoebox with toys that are designated for kids in other countries of the world. Then um, Samaritan's Purse will take these toys and they'll put them in a box and they'll take them overseas and they'll also give the good news of Jesus Christ in the form of gospel tracts and people to share truth with others. So we want to encourage you. There's two ways you can do this. Number one, you could fill your own box or number two, you can go online northsidebaptist.org slash events and go to the page that has our Operation Christmas Child logo and you can use that to fill a box online. So Whichever you choose to do, we encourage you to be involved and to share the good news of Jesus Christ across the world through Operation Christmas Child in the month of July. Well, welcome back, guys. I hope you do like and share the video because it's important that we get the word out about what we're doing. We sure miss you guys here at the church, and we're pretty much, you know, we're just watching to see when we're going to be able to get back together again. So make sure you pay attention to northsidebaptist.org and also to our Facebook because we'll let you know when we're going to have kids activities again. But I want to pick up in verse 19 where Paul is talking about the, the Greek philosophers that he's hanging around. It says, Then they, the philosophers, took him and brought him to a meeting in the Areopagus, where they said to him, May we know what this new teaching is that you're presenting. Are you bringing some strange ideas to our ears? And we want to know what they mean. All the Athenians and foreigners who lived there spent their time doing nothing but talking about and listening to the latest ideas. Basically what Paul did is Paul began to share the good news of Jesus Christ with these people that were there. And just like when we share Jesus today, there were people who thought that Paul was crazy. And there were other people who thought, you know, this is something I would like to listen to. That's the way it is today. Some people hear the truth and they just totally dismiss it. Other people hear the truth, the same truth, the same words, and they go, wait, there's something to that. That's very important to know because when someone starts listening to what we're saying, we need to be able to explain to them what is going on. We need to be able to explain and tell them about the good news of Jesus Christ. So Paul begins to share this with them. And I, I just want to make the biggest point right now that it's the reason that we watch videos. It's the reason that we have small groups. It's the reason that we come to church. It's the reason when we study our Bible. It's when we are in our groups that we go with that we get an opportunity to share Jesus Christ with others. We don't want to miss that opportunity because we're not prepared. We want to study. We want to be ready. We want to be a workman that knows how to share the truth of Jesus Christ. And, and that's, that's because Jesus has given us the job of sharing his love with others. And, and I just want to just tell you, you know, if it's art that you're a thing of, if you love art, Use your art with other people who love art to be able to share Jesus with your art. If it's baseball or any other kind of sports, use those sports in order to share with others the good news of Jesus Christ. If you're into model airplanes, then share with people who like model airplanes about Jesus. You don't have to learn how to do something new to share Jesus. You just have to use what you're already doing. Paul was already in the marketplace. He was already traveling to that hill. He already saw it. And this is what he said. When he got up there, he said, Guys, listen, when I was coming in, I saw that you, a religious group, had put a shrine to an unknown God. He goes, let me tell you something. I know who that God is. And Paul began to share with them the good news of Jesus Christ. Can you believe that? They had already had a shrine to an unknown God in case they missed one. And Paul said, listen, here's the one you've been missing. It's Jesus Christ. Jesus is the reason because, see, there's no statue to depict God because Jesus was born flesh and blood, died on the cross for our sins, 
was buried and rose again three days later. I'm going to tell you, if somebody raises from the dead, folks, you listen to them. Paul was not disrespectful. Paul did not try to tell them how wrong they were. He simply revealed Jesus to them. And I, I think there's a lot for us to learn in that. When he went through the marketplace, he didn't say, oh, you guys are all wrong. What he said was, is, listen, I know the truth. I know Jesus. And Jesus is the reason that all of this exists. From the rising of the sun to the oceans to the beauty that we see in creation, Jesus is that reason. And to them, he was an unknown God. But when he was finished talking, you know what? He wasn't an unknown God anymore. Jesus was someone that they knew. Because they could accept Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior and live for him. And Paul made a huge impact on that city. Paul wasn't even supposed to be there, guys. So let me ask you, what tools do you have in your hand to be able to share Jesus with others? I mean, if you are good at something, use that as a tool to share Jesus. Just have fun with it. You don't have to be... Uh, a, a scholar or, or, or know exactly all the ins and outs of everything to share the good news of Jesus Christ. All you got to do is just take the time and be ready. And I want so much for you to share with your friends. Even if your group is small, what a better time. There's no better time to tell the people than when it's just a couple of people. And as we get through this summer thing, I just pray that you guys will have an opportunity to see a lot of your friends come to know Jesus, and I'd love to hear about it. Make sure you send me a message to let me know, okay? Let me know that you're sharing Jesus Christ with others. And I want to just pray with you right now. And we're going to end up today. But listen, go out, share the gospel. Don't be afraid to use what God's already put in your hands in order to tell people about Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, I am so excited about the fact that you've given us the opportunity to share your love with others. Help us to take advantage of that. I pray for these kids that you'll keep them safe. I pray for their parents, that you'll help them to be able to, to know exactly what to do and when to do it in these times that are so confusing, Lord. Lord, we love you. Watch over, protect us. Keep us healthy. This we ask in your precious and holy name. Amen. See you later, guys. So Jesus is the answer for everyone. He is the one that God sent to be our Savior. When Paul was in Athens, this is who he was talking about. He used the altar to an unknown God to share the message of Jesus with the people. He spoke about the things that the people were talking about and the things that they were thinking about already. He tried to help them understand who Jesus is. You know, you can help others understand who Jesus is as well, and you can tell them. All you have to do is just be real. Share with them who he is to you and what he's done in your life. Talk in a way that your friends would understand. You can explain the difference that Jesus has made in your life. You can explain how he's changed your family for better. You can also say what you say is important. But remember, what you do makes a bigger impact. One of the reasons that God sent Jesus to the earth is to show us what he's like. We can help others to know Jesus by the way we live, by the choices we make, by the way we treat others the way that we want to be treated. When we treat people with love and respect and kindness, they see the love of Jesus through us. You can do this by looking out for a kid in school who doesn't seem to have a lot of friends. You can show the love of Jesus when you tell the truth. Even if it could get you in trouble. You can show the love of Jesus when you admit that you've made a mistake. You can show people what a difference that Jesus has made in your life. When you do something that you don't have to do to help someone else, like maybe helping around the house or choosing to share your favorite toy with a friend or encouraging someone who's had a bad day, that's how you show the love of Jesus to others. So my challenge to you this week is to take time to maybe step back and let somebody else go first. Do a chore you would normally have to do. Share that toy. Speak up. Be kind to someone that needs to hear a kind word this week. I hope you have a good week, and we'll see you again next week. Bye. <laughs>